live from the Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina, we've got Western Kentucky against Kentucky. Second round of the NCAA. Let's check the starting lineups. First for Western Kentucky. Up front, Kennard Johnson, a junior, 6'9", and Ray Swagger, a 6'3", junior. The center is Clarence Martin, also a junior at 6'8". The backcourt, McNary, a sophomore, and Billy Gordon, the leading scorer at 14.2. For Kentucky, led by Winston Bennett and Kenny Skywalker, the All-American up front. Blackman, also a guard. Here are the officials. Charlie Backa in the middle, flanked by Lenny Wirtz and Mark Riesling, and we are set to go. Only the second time ever that these two teams have met. Western Kentucky in red. Kentucky in the traditional white and blue. This is Ray Swagger. At 6'3", he plays a forward. Kentucky also has that situation with a 6'3 forward, and that is Blackman for them. McNary with a lot of pressure to Swagger. Blocked from behind. Great defense by Blackman and James Brown. That's the matchup we need to keep an eye on. And as great a season as Kentucky has had, much more so than anyone expected, Mike, the key has been the Eddie Sutton installed aggressive defense on the part of Kentucky. Swagger gets the ball out to James McNary, the sophomore from Earl Owensboro. In the middle, Kennard Jackson with his first two. You'll see an awful lot of post-up plays and certainly a lot of attempts to get the ball down low. That's what Western Kentucky feels they can exploit against Kentucky. Loose ball out of bounds. It'll be out to Kentucky as Kennard Johnson gets a great view of everything. These two teams met only once before in the NCAA tournament. That was 1971 in Athens, Georgia. Western Kentucky had Jim McDaniels, and they routed the Wildcats 107-83. Western starting out with an aggressive man-to-man -man defense. Davender looking inside, has Walker for his first shot. Triple pump, and he got it. What a great touch. It'll be important to see how quickly Kenny Walker can get started because if he starts to get on fire, you'll see a zone defense. Billy Gordon, Lancaster's younger brother, the only senior on the squad, misses his first opportunity. Walker's got to be awfully pleased to see a man-to-man -man defense. Rarely has he ever seen man-to-man -man this entire season. Pushing off inside by Clarence Martin, the 6'8 junior from Alexandria City, Louisiana. And he's got an awfully difficult task and trying to stop Kenny Skywalker, who is virtually unstoppable one-on-one. -on -one. There's Walker. Just a great player, averaging about 20 points a game. This is Winston Bennett, the tough man inside. He has two, and Kentucky is up 4-2 over Western. Western Kentucky feels that they, they have a, an advantage in terms of being much more physical along the front line. Winston Bennett loves that style. This, incidentally, is Gordon scores to tie it at four. The first time Western has been in the tournament since 1971. <laughs> And they're doing it under Clem Haskins, who has been associated with the program in such a great way for so long. And we've got a holding foul against Western Kentucky. Clem Haskins up, did not like the call. It's going to be on Gordon. That's his first, the team's second here in the opening minute and 45 seconds. Clem Haskins really has this team playing some aggressive, inspired basketball. He believes in discipline, wants some thinking players out there on the court, and he's got them. When he played 65 through 67, Western Kentucky won 81% of its games. And he still holds the single-game scoring record at 55 in one game. No doubting whether he could do it on the court and certainly has the mind as a tactician to do it as a coach. This is Harden. We'll do most of the uh, ball handling along with Davender. Davender to the baseline. Nice pump fake. And got it. Boy, Davender blossoms in this type of play here. The up-tempo. The New York City kid loves to play the slick style. Western Kentucky quickly back. The Hilltoppers come in with an excellent record. Not nearly as good as Kentucky, however, at 30 and 3. That's Billy Gordon. He has four, and Western has tied it again at six. Good skip pass over to Billy Gordon. Of course, living so long in the shadow of his older brother, Lancaster Gordon, but he can play. His records were just as impressive in high school. James, he's really been an exciting player for them this year. He scored more as a senior, or as many points as a senior, as he had in his first three years. Walker, 14-footer. He gets more bounces like that, and it's not luck. A couple of times may be luck, but a whole career, it's touch. Shooter's touch, good backspin. Backspin keeps the ball up around the rim. Billy Gordon and Winston Bennett clears the glass for the Cats. 
Harden picked up by McNary. Zone defense being displayed by Western Kentucky now. A 1-3-1 at that. Showing respect for the wing shooting ability of Western Kentucky. He's a rather Kentucky that is. Harden, a better than 50% shooter, misses it. And nobody went for the loose ball. Damager just waited until it rolled out to him. Harden will try it again. Won't go. Nice rebound by Martin. Gordon on the run to McNary. He missed. Follow shot will not count by Kennard Johnson. And they'll call Kennard Johnson for the foul. Looked like an aggressive rebound on the part of Kennard Johnson. Let's take a look to see what the officials saw up tight. Kennard Johnson is going to go in for the rebound on this missed shot attempt by James McNary. Looked like just a good, clean, aggressive rebounding. No pushing that time. Kennard had both hands in the air. And Clem Haskins already has the jacket off. Bennett, turn around. Got it. 10-6, Kentucky. You'll see nothing but Bennett headlines next year. Laboring in the shadow, of course, of uh, Kenny Walker. But he's helped Walker to be an even more effective ball player. Doing the dirty work, taking some of the load off of him. This is Ray Swagger. Gives it off to McNary. Now they go low inside, and Jackson is stripped to the ball. Here comes Kentucky on the run. Blackman, and the end. Won't go. And Western back the other way. Now they'll slow it down. Good up-tempo that time by Kentucky. Certainly that's the kind of game that both Davender and Blackman love. Really, both of those two have gained their confidence immensely this year under Eddie Sutton. And a 10-second count. Official Lenny Wirt standing right beside James McNary, who was taking his time. And it cost him a turnover. Oh, it's so rare to see that off a missed shot with no pressure. Obviously, he was listening to Clint Haskins over on the side, taking a little too much time in the process. Harden, now Davender into Walker. He just hangs on that jumper. And the fist in the air for Kenny Walker, who already has six in the first four and a half minutes. Kentucky doing a nice job of spreading that offense, creating some big scenes, and Kenny Walker only needs a little soon. They got the roll on that. Western cuts the lead back to four at 12-8. Kentucky has gotten 10 of its 12 points up front. And they've come from Bennett and that man, All-American Skywalker. Harden trying to save it, does. Kentucky's getting all the loose balls, and now we've got a little bump in there, and the foul is going to go against McNary, and he wants more. Well, well you, Blackman. Knew, you knew that the emotions were going to be awfully high for this one. Nothing more than aggressive basketball that time between Blackman and McNary. Again, because they're bumping, McNary's motion carried him forward, but Blackman said, hey, look here. I'm here, too, to play. Well, intimidation is part of the game. You want to get the best of the other guy, and neither Blackman nor McNary back down in that instance. We've got a timeout with 14.53 left. It's Kentucky by four. It isn't easy. Brown back with you here, and this is how Western Kentucky got to the tournament as the eighth seed in the Southeast. They are under 500 against other teams in the NCAA championship. Kentucky, on the other hand, with that glorious 30 and 3 record, is 11 and 3 and 12 and 3 on the road. When you look at that outstanding record of Kentucky, you've got to start first with that young man right there, Eddie Sutton, my, my choice for coach of the year. A team that was picked to finish third in the SEC went to the top, only one loss, and he's done it with defense and an open-door policy that encourages his players to come and talk to him. After a brilliant job at Arkansas and before that Creighton, he has settled in in Lexington and has the Wildcats with a 30-3 and three record. And he has them up by four points right here. 1-3-1 one, one zone defense on the part of Western Kentucky, respecting again their outside shooting of Kentucky. And Richard Madison, number 42 on your screen, is in for the first time. Skywalker. Oh, he's just unstoppable. Eight points in the first five and a half minutes. Does a magnificent job of keeping the ball high when he gets it in there and turning quickly. He jumps so high, he can get up in the air and adjust his jump shot once he's in the air. He has not missed a thing for Kentucky. Four for four. And the Wildcats are up by six. Kennard Johnson, nice touch. Johnson has six. Now, Walker does such a good job, again, 
Clarence Martin is in the middle to try to take away that move of uh, Kenny Walker's, but he does such a good job of getting in the seams. His teammates find him with nice high passes. Winston Bennett has done some damage early, misses this time. And here comes James McNary, the sophomore from Owensboro, Kentucky. First true point guard the program has had in a long time. Good job of getting back on D by Kentucky. This is Swagger. Line drive jumper comes up short, and here come the Wildcats. Three on two break. Madison, and he'll get the foul. Richard Madison uh, missed practice for a couple of days with the flu. Up until that point, had played in... Uh, every game except one because of a knee injury earlier this year well kentucky certainly is going to need madison's size and strength in there western kentucky a big physical team along the front line eddie sutton may very well be forced at some point in this game to continue to substitute big in the persons of richard madison cedric jenkins and robert Locke. madison uh, the coaches feel is the best pure athlete on the team foul incidentally was on billy gordon and that's his second they can ill afford to have him in foul trouble And Swagger over at the sideline. Checking with uh, the scorer's table for some reason. Swagger, a junior from Buffalo, New York. Junior college All-American. The Clem Haskins was very happy to get here. As a matter of fact, when he came to the program, one of the coaches in that uh, junior college league wrote Clem Haskins a letter and said, thank you very much for getting him out of my life. <laughs> but he's an excellent defensive player, and that's one of the reasons he's in the game. Madison hits the free throw, and now the scorer's table. Obviously, wants to talk to the officials. And I don't have the foggiest idea why uh, they've stopped the game with 13.23 to go in the first half. Well, fog is exactly, exactly what the scorer had in mind. He was trying to clear that away. Look at him. Maybe it was the alternating possession clock. The ball will go over to Western Kentucky. And the arrow right now is pointing in Kentucky's favor if we have a jump ball situation. I don't know that that was the reason for the stoppage of play, but we're back in action now with 13-10 to go. Harden goes for the steal, can't get it away from McNary. Excellent defense on the part of Kentucky, but a nice move, good athletic move that time. And that'll be goaltending on Skywalker. What a move by McNary. Excellent move, because Roger Harden was playing extremely good defense right on top of him but a better move by McNary. Uh, the stoppage of play earlier was a question about a substitution, whether they got a substitution into the ballgame in time or not, but that's all been cleared up. And now Western Kentucky trying to create a little pressure with their defense. Harden and Davender in the backcourt for Eddie Sutton's Wildcats, who come in with a 30-3 and record. They are the top seed in the Southeast, hoping to go to Atlanta. And again, look how big along the front line Western is in the 1-3-1 alignment, the three men across the middle. Winston Bennett, we want to remind our viewers in the Northeast and Midwest that they'll be leaving us in just a few minutes to see another game of special interest in their local areas. We'll keep you up to date on the progress of this game with scoring reports and highlights as we go along. It's 18-12, Kentucky over Western Kentucky with 12.32 to go. I Foul was on Roger Harden at first. Excuse me, Jay. How Western Kentucky wants to get the ball along the blocks, Mike, so that their inside guys can take advantage of the denial defense, the overplayed defense of West, or rather Kentucky. But Kentucky is doing a great job of denying that entry pass. Ray Swagger gets it back out to McNary. This is Tellus Frank who's into the ball game. Excellent player off the bench. The left-handed jumper is no good by Johnson. Loose ball to Kentucky, and Ray Swagger is really upset. He just let it go. He thought it was their ball. Clem Haskins up off the bench. He guided his team to a 20 and 23 and 7 record this year, 10 and 4 in the Sun Belt Conference. They beat Nebraska 67 to 59 to get into the second round of play. This is Blackman as uh, Western Kentucky trying trapping pressure. Madison, a good rainbow jumper from about the position he was. Good outside shooter. Skywalker, double team, finally gets it to Blackman. Western Kentucky picking up its defense. They've got to keep talking along the back line, which is where Kenny Walker and Winston Bennett operate so well coming into that zone. And Davender will try it from the outside. 
comes McNary, likes to push it up. And that's Kennard Johnson, the 6'9", junior from Cincinnati, has eight points. And Western Kentucky is back within four at 18-14. Davender, Blackman back to help out. As Harden is out of the ballgame right now for Kentucky. This is Winston Bennett. High arch on the shot, won't go. And Kentucky not getting second chance opportunities now. And Kennard aggressively trying to take control on the defensive end. McNary baseline drive, and we've got a holding foul called against Ed Davender. That'll be his first and only the second team foul against Kentucky in the first half. Western has already committed five. Madison goes out of the ball game, and Roger Harden, the senior from Valparaiso, Indiana, checks back in. Kentucky by four with 10 minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first half. And for the first time, this is Kirk Lee, number 11 in the ball game, working outside. Great pass inside to Johnson. Missed the shot, but Clarence Martin got the jam, and they'll call Martin for the offensive foul. And you can light a fire on Clem Haskins' forehead. Again, let's take a look to see what the frustration was. Number 55 to the left of your screen. Again, absolutely not a foul. If there was a foul, it was on Walker moving into Clarence Martin that time. Very difficult, Michael, to commit a foul when both hands are in the air on the ball. Clarence Martin picks up his second personal, and Clem Haskins is really starched. That could have gotten his club within two. He's got a reason to be upset on that call. Still on his feet over there at the Western Kentucky bench. Blackman to Harden, wide open, 17-footer. May have been touched on the rim, and it was. Basket interference called on Cedric Jenkins, number 55. Ten minutes, 28 seconds left to go. Kentucky on top by four over Western here in the first half. Our viewers in the Northeast and Midwest will be leaving us momentarily to see another game of special interest in their local areas. Ten minutes, six seconds left to go. Baseline jumper by Tellus Frank. His first two points have Western Kentucky back within a bucket. Weston opting to call off the three-quarters court pressure. I think Coach Clem Haskins is trying to be a little concerned, a little wary about possible fouls. Clem Haskins can go pretty deep on that, that bench. He's got some athletes coming on. And they love the up-tempo. Swagger to Lee, and Lee ties it at 18. JB, you have to know the emotion for Western Kentucky. They're just brimming with it. Extremely high, but it was important that Haskins tell his crew to maintain their control. And the giant killer, Arkansas Little Rock, is out after North Carolina State. They lead by two. It's early. Jimmy Balvano saying he hates to play teams with the height. That's right. <laughs> See, they're playing for everybody, including the third world. <laughs> well, Arkansas Little Rock has already made its uh, mark in this tournament along with teams like Cleveland State. Nine minutes, 18 seconds to go in this one, and we have a tie between Kentucky and Western Kentucky. We knew that the action was going to be aggressive and physical on the boards. Take a look in there. Taking no prisoners underneath. Winston Bennett got doubled over. And that doesn't happen very often. He likes this style of ball. We mentioned before that finesse is not his calling card. He loves the blood and gore, and he will be in there banging hard. He loves this style. Bennett, who averages almost 13 points a game, has six so far in this one. May get seven on the free throw, and he is a 75% free throw shooter on the season. The thing I like about him, not only can he What's take that? the punishment, he can dish it out, and he doesn't change expressions at all. Interesting, the media voted him on the uh, second team, All-SEC. The coaches voted him on the first team. Coaches recognize how valuable, how important he has been to this Kentucky team. Quietly going about his job. Timeout, 9-18 to go. First half, Kentucky leads Western Kentucky by two. Ever between Western Kentucky and Kentucky, and it's a two-point ball game in the second round of the NCAA. Mike Patrick and James Brown with you from Charlotte, North Carolina. Had a great first game here where Alabama beat Illinois at the buzzer. 
Mike, I had talked before about how Coach Sutton was perhaps going to have to substitute big in order to match up better against Western Kentucky, and that's exactly what he's done with uh, Cedric Jenkins in the game along the front line to go with Winston Bennett and Kenny Walker. Steve Miller, number 31, is into the ball game for the first time. Bang shot, won't go for Tellus Frank. He follows, won't go again. And we've got a jump ball situation. The ball's going to go to Kentucky on the alternating possession rule. Tellus Frank on the inside. Excellent, aggressive hustle. He is much better coming off the bench, believe it or not, as a score. Western Kentucky tried starting him a number of games. He was not as effective, averaging only about six points a game off the bench. He's averaging 10 points a game and five rebounds. He's a player. Blackman will help out on the press, and Western falls back into a man-to-man. -man. Billy Gordon picks Blackman up. Kentucky by two, and they have the basketball. Kirk Lee is trying to deny the ball to Roger Harden. And Kentucky now recognizing the change in defense. It's a man-to-man, -man, something that Walker thrives off of. And he thrives right there, leans into a jumper. Skywalker with 10 of Kentucky's 22 points. And he is perfect from the four on five of five. I know Walker just salivates when he sees a man-to-man -man defense knowing people can't stop him. And a whistle, the basket won't count. It didn't go anyhow, and they're going to call Kenny Walker with a foul. Steps out with that quizzical look and still raises his arm. Again, Kenny Walker is so accustomed to being double and triple teamed in a zone defensive setup that whenever he gets a man-to-man -man setup, he just can't believe it. He simply out jumps the player. And that nice shooting motion there where he goes up with his arm out like that draws the foul in most situations. The third all-time leading scorer in Kentucky history. He is only 22 points behind Jack Gibbons for number two. Might get it today. Bad shot. Air ball that time as Billy Gordon hit nothing with it. And Kentucky with a chance to pad a four-point lead. Walker. That Kennard just, Johnson at 6'9 can get up there, but he was helpless on that one. That just won't work. Walker cannot be stopped that way, especially if you allow him the ball. You've got to play deny defense. Tellus Frank gets it back outside to Kirk Lee, the freshman from Baltimore. This is Steve Miller, high school player of the year in Kentucky two years ago. He's had injury problems since coming to Western. Frank back off to Lee. Lee's running the offense, so Billy Gordon can get better shots. He had it there, but he missed it. The follow will go from Kennard Johnson, who's really working hard. We talked about them being physical on the board. It's a good example of that. Kentucky really is doing what they want to get done on the offensive end by forcing the outside shots, not allowing Western Kentucky to get the ball down low in the blocks. But they've got to block off. 24-20. Kentucky on top with 7.09 to go first half. A 2-3 zone defense now being employed by Western. Blackman worked for a shot and couldn't get it. Blackman's open on the wing again. Instead, they go to Winston Bennett. Walker in the lane, leans into another, and he is still perfect from the floor. Walker, 7 out of 7, 14 points. Now, what can you do? Not much, Mike, because there was not much of an opening when Walker got the ball, but he doesn't need much. Kirk Lee trying to work on Harden for a shot. Kennard Johnson calling for the ball inside. He really wants it. And that is Billy Gordon. The senior from Jackson, Mississippi, has six and has Western Kentucky back within four. Western doing a good job of nailing the outside shots when they're given the shots because they're trying to dump the ball down low, but Kentucky doing a good job of doubling down low and forcing the outside shot. Two three defense still. Got to be concerned about Walker. Cedric Jenkins is uh, checking the Kentucky lineup. He's number 55. And Bennett from the perimeter won't go. Blackman crashed the boards trying to get it instead. Kirk Lee on the run for Western Kentucky. And there's another jumper from Billy Gordon. Smooth, really smooth. They cut it to two. Gordon is the man they want to have the ball at the end. He's won three games with last-second shots this year. When Billy Gordon is on, he can shoot the lights out of the basket. Harden gives it to Black into the corner of the walker. Kentucky being very patient on offense. Bennett, nice move with the baseline, but he lost the ball out of bounds. 
Eddie Sutton up off the Kentucky bench. And there's Clem Haskins. Now he's got the towel. The coat came off in about a minute and a half. <laughs> he's an intense coach. Clem didn't waste any time. Gordon misses from the perimeter this time. Kentucky on the run. It's a two-on-three fast break, and Harden will wait for help. Davender back into the ball game. Walker, eight for eight for Kenny Walker. Just another day at the office, 16 points in the first half. The true superstars rise to the occasion, no pun intended with Walker, but they truly show their best stuff in the big games, and Walker does it game in and game out. Clarence Martin, the center, being guarded by Cedric Jenkins. He's back He's outside to Kirk Lee. Again, watch Weston try to get the ball down low to either Steve Miller or tell us Frank, and they can't get it inside. Kentucky doing a good job of pressuring the ball. Gordon trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Davender, and we've got a five-second call. Great defense by Davender, and Western Kentucky turns it over. A turnover is just as effective as a steal. So many coaches try to impress that amongst players when you're playing tough defense. It's Kentucky by four over Western. The story of this game so far is the All-American forward Kenny Walker, eight out of eight from the floor and 16 points. His teammates help him to be effective in the middle by getting the pass to him high, and once he gets it, he out jumps everybody and adjusts himself while he's in the air. Now, normally you're supposed to have your body square to the basket when you shoot it. Walker jumps so high that he's able to turn, rotate in the air while still going up. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first half. Walker is eight out of eight. The rest of the Kentucky team is only shooting 33%, four out of 12. But they can do that if uh, the guy who's taken eight shots has made them all. You're teasing Walker about him perhaps having an extra inch on his job after he got rid of all the hair on top. <laughs> Glenn Haskins wanted a walk and didn't get it. Back to a 1-3-1 zone defense. Clem Haskins is trying everything to cool off the hot shooting walker. This is Harden. Shot clock is down to 13 seconds right now. Walker double team got it in the middle of Winston Bennett, survived the bump and missed the shot. The rebound goes to Clarence Martin. He gives it off to Lee. Lee's done a good job at the point since he came in there. Inside to Kennard Johnson. Missed the shot. Walker tipped it outside, and here comes Davender. One on two. He goes to the hole. Missed the shot. Blocking foul. Davender took on two Hilltoppers and still drew the foul. What's helping right now are the big hearts of Kentucky. Take a look. This is what Western Kentucky wanted, a shot in the blocks. Great play by Walker, who had no chance of controlling it, but he tips it out, and Davender loves the open court play. New York City style creativity that time. And they call the foul on Billy Gordon. That will be his third personal foul with 327 to go in the first half. Now, Western feels they have a deeper bench. They're going to need him now to keep Gordon out of foul trouble. Well, he's their leading scorer. As a matter of fact, he's only one of two players in double figures on the season's average. Davender at the line. Davender nearly an 80% free throw shooter. McNary comes back into the ball game, and they'll set Kirk Lee down, but keep Billy Gordon in the ball game. And Locke comes in, Robert Locke, for Kentucky again. Eddie Sutton substituting big. Brett McNeil now comes into the ball game for Western Kentucky, 6'2 freshman out of Minneapolis, Player of the Year in that state a year ago. The left-hander, and they do get Gordon out of the ball game. Second free throw is good. Kentucky spreads the lead to six. Somewhat apparent that uh, Coach Sutton really has had Robert Locke on some agility drills, working hard. He's playing a lot more agile, a lot more under control than last year. This is Brett McDeal, the freshman. Gets it to McNary, double clutch. Shot won't go for him. Kentucky has it, but the foul's going to be on Roger Harden. That's number two on Harden. He tried to slap it outside. And talking with Coach Sutton about his team, he said, James, take a look at this team. Does this look like a team that can win 30 games? Absolutely <laughs> not, but the kids really play with what he termed big Valentines, big hearts. They go out there and they give their all. Plus, he's got to play an excellent defense. 
He's done the job of coaching everywhere he's ever been. This is Pellis Frank. And threw it away. Davender, Snowbird. And Kentucky leads by eight. Clem Haskins has seen enough. He wants a timeout with 2.50 left in the first half here in Charlotte. Kentucky has just exploded on Western. At the conclusion of every CBS Sports NCAA tournament broadcast, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. Chevrolet donates $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. 250 left in the first half. Very surprised that the Western Kentucky bench, as deep as they are, the, the quality players from Haskins could go to. We are North Carolina State is playing Arkansas, and that's Arkansas Little Rock, and NC State has come from behind under Jim Balvano to take the lead. Just updated, as you saw, to 30 27. The teams that most people don't give any chance of winning because they don't have a big name, a lot of visibility. They play with a, a nothing to lose attitude, and that can inspire some great performances. Western Kentucky down by eight. They have the basketball with two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Kentucky has scored six straight points to break open a close one. Let's see if Western continues with their plan, their original tactic of trying to get the ball down low on the blocks. This is McNary. Gets it outside to Ray Swagger off the back of the rim. Walker lost the rebound. Swagger commits the offensive foul. And one thing that's happening right now is every time a Western Kentucky player is called for a foul, they turn around and look at their coach. A little frustrated now. Western's got a smaller player, a smaller lineup in play now, but take a look at Kenny Walker. My gosh, talk about skywalking up awfully high. Now, that was an opportunity for Swagger to bring the ball back out front. A little too much handling of the ball. Like the Hilltoppers are looking to Clem Haskins for help, and he can't go out there and do it for him. Here's a bad pass, and Swagger gets this one. Under control. Nothing is going for the Hilltoppers right now. Harden comes back the other way. Behind the back. Holy cow, what a pass by Harden and the Jamba Walker. Now they're starting to put on the show. Up by 10. Kentucky fans are going crazy here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Walker showing a little emotion. First time in a couple of ball games. Has it low, knocked away from him this time. McNary gets it off right side to Swagger, and he misses. The Hilltoppers must, starting, uh, must be starting to believe there's a lid on it cannot go this badly for the Hilltoppers in two halves. They're getting some good shots. They're just not dropping. Haskins obviously trying to change the tempo with a smaller lineup in there, trying to push the ball up the court to cut into that 10-point deficit. Davender. This is Locke. We'll take a 15-footer. Comes up short. Rebound to Steve Miller, the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. I had to swagger. Swagger wide open, kicks it back outside. And another miss inside by Brett McNeil. All the right moves, just not falling. Cleveland State early over St. Joseph's, 8-4. to four. What a great story they are, as well as Arkansas Little Rock. Big time athletes on that Cleveland State team. 38 seconds left to go in the first half. 10 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So Kentucky cannot hold it for the last shot. Important for the Hilltoppers not to lose confidence. They've been executing some of the plays right. They've been getting some good shots. Just has been a lid on the basket. Do not lose confidence. There's another half to go. Davender working for his shot. Just skied the re and Locke tipped it in. Davender hung in midair. The soft touch kept the ball around the rim. There's 10 seconds to go in the half. A 12-point lead. McNary trying to create something inside. Bodies go everywhere. McNary went down hard. Well, one of the bodies that he ran into was that of Robert Locke. 6'10", solid, easily 240-245. Western Kentucky has not scored in five and a half minutes. 
And McNary a little slow getting up. Again, McNary trying to do his part by pushing the tempo. Lost control out front. Ooh. That's what that's where the mistake was. Winston Bennett went down, but not nearly as hard. And from the crowd. A lot of the uh, white and blue clad Kentucky fans are standing along with the uh, red clad Western Kentucky fans. And the ankle is obviously going to be a problem for him as they help him off. And we hope the young man from Owensboro, Kentucky, is going to be just fine. Obviously very, very tough. As you take a look at McNary, watch that right foot of his as he steps on the left leg, the left foot of Robert Locke right there. You see the ankle twist. Oh. Awfully quick snap. That's what did it. McNary will leave the ball game with six seconds to go. Western Kentucky will have the basketball, trying to get the last shot of the first half and trying to close in that 12-point uh, deficit. Pass knocked away, and Kentucky saves it. Ahead. Jenkins did not get it off in time. The basket will not count. Our halftime score, Kentucky 36, Western Kentucky 24. He needed that first half. Certainly is good to know that it wasn't any more serious than that because certainly had all the possibilities of being such. Tellus Frank will inbound for Western Kentucky. Down by a dozen with 20 minutes of basketball left from Charlotte, North Carolina. Harden picks up Kirk Lee. Important for the Hilltoppers to understand they don't have to get it all back at one time. Take your time and go at it slowly. Interesting to see if they can get the ball to Kennard Johnson who was very effective early and then didn't get the ball later. Let's see if the basket counts. The officials are checking with each other to see if it does. Be a chance for a three-point play for Western if the basket counts, and it does. Western Kentucky seems more intent right now in taking the ball to the hoop. Good-looking move by Tellus Frank as he goes in and draws the foul. Western Kentucky was not at the free-throw line at all in the first half. They've got to change that. Frank will have a chance for a three-point play. Foul was called on Ed Davender. That'll be his second. And Frank, who is nearly an 80% free throw shooter, will have a chance for a three-point play. And got it. And cuts the lead to nine. Excellent start of the second half for Western Kentucky. And now here comes the full court pressure. And again, Coach Sutton substituting for matchup purposes and taking a Blackman out of the game and bringing Jenkins in right quickly. Harden working against Lee. Now they get it to Winston. Bennett tries to drive the baseline. What a move to get away from Johnson. Bennett with a rebound. Boy, he loves it tough on the inside. And he is fouled by Tellus Frank. You know, I think Winston Bennett just straps on a flag jacket whenever he goes out there to play, <laughs> and he goes at it hard. Picks up the foul in the lane. Non-shooting foul. Bennett with four rebounds so far. Averages 6.8 on the season. 2-3 zone defense on the part of Western Kentucky. Jenkins reach in slap foul on Kirk Lee. That'll be his second. Been up and down this year. High school player of the year last season in Baltimore. And he certainly has come from an outstanding program, Dunbar, Baltimore. Coach Bob Wade has turned out nothing but outstanding players. Reggie Williams, David Wingate, Tyrone Bogues, you name it. And they'll correct the number of fouls on Lee. He only has one. Harden calls out the play for Kentucky. Jenkins has played a long time here for Kentucky in the middle. Number 55, Van Jenkins. Davender out to Harden. With patience by Kentucky. And Davender on Lowe's. Followed by Bennett. Basket counts, and he's got the foul inside. Timed it beautifully. Even though you're playing a 2-3 zone defense, it's important that you take a look at the offside. Watch Winston Bennett. To the right of your screen, you don't see him, but he's going to come into the picture. Most rebounds from the opposite side will rebound on the opposite side, and Winston Bennett flying into the picture. Nice follow. And the foul is on Tellus Frank. That will be his third coming off of Plum Haskins' Western Kentucky bench. 
that's one point that's so hard to bang into the heads of players when they're in a zone defense. You still have man-to-man -man blocking out responsibilities underneath the hoop. Winston Bennett will go to the line where he is two of two, has 10 points, approaching the season's average of 12.8. Uh, hey, Missed this one, however. 38-27, Kentucky by 11. Frank quickly back the other way. His jumper short. Walker with a rebound. Uh, I think you got to get the ball inside. You got to take it in there. Force Kentucky to foul you. Kennard Johnson was hot early, and it really hasn't seen the ball that much since uh, about 10 minutes to go in the first half. Get another foul as Cedric Jenkins makes his move on the inside. See, nicely, Kentucky is taking the ball to the inside. They're getting their big guys to pump fake. They're expecting and relishing that contact. That's why they're making the trips to the free throw line. Foul called on Kennard Johnson. Jenkins playing with a sore neck. He went down hard Friday night. You could hear his back of his head hit the floor everywhere in the sold-out Coliseum. Well, the coaching staff is awfully pleased. Again, take a look at Winston Bennett coming from the left side of the screen, bottom left-hand corner. Nobody blocks him out. They forget the block out assignment. Can't do that with uh, Winston Bennett. And tell us Frank got there late. It's 40-27, Kentucky over Western by 13 with 18-29 left to go from Charlotte. Kirk Lee being guarded by Harden. Frank at the baseline. At least Johnson got to touch the ball this trip down, put it up the left hand and missed, kept it alive. And the rebound will come out to Billy Gordon. Boy, Jenkins is really changing some shots up on the inside. Long arms of his changing shots. Another miss. Western Kentucky just can't put it in the hole. Give the credit to Cedric Jenkins, those long arms paying dividends. Alley oop and Harden barely missed Kenny Walker. That's hard to do. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you gotta throw that thing up there about 15 feet, don't you? That's awfully hard to do as a Miss Kenny Walker. That one's just a little too high. Western Kentucky down by 13. Nice pass inside. Johnson draws the foul this time. That'll be on Jenkins. Johnson's just been throttled after 10 points early in the first half. And you're right, James. Jenkins has done a good job on it. He's got very long arms, and it's worked very well for him in the inside, forcing Western Kentucky to change some shots up. And you take a look at them missing 12 of their last 13 field goal attempts. Jenkins certainly has helped in a good measure of those. Johnson at the line, only a 65% free throw shooter. Junior from Cincinnati. Forty to twenty-eight. The margin now twelve with seventeen thirty-seven to go. First point of the second half for Kennard Johnson, who now has eleven. He averages twelve. Crowd very quiet right now, seeming to be waiting for something to happen. Second free throw is good. And this is Brian Asbury, six six and a half. He's listed at two forty. Uh, that's before lunch. 240. The floorboards better be reinforced now that he's on the floor. <laughs> Brian Asbury can really mix it up. He likes to bang. Pardon? Western Kentucky in that trapping defense trying to create something. This is Jenkins. Walker was wide open. Jenkins didn't see him under the basket. Harden does. Walker had it blocked, but he got the foul. Walker was in there screaming for the ball. Even though you get your shot blocked like that, you have to take the ball to the basket. Walker knows that, and even though the crowd may react to a pretty block of a guy who can leap that high, nine times out of ten, the officials will call the foul. That's exactly what happened. 6'8", Cedric Martin came over and picked up his third personal foul. Von Haskins with the jacket back on for the second half. People have tried to stop Walker so many different ways, and they've got their hands and arms and fingers flailing in the air. One of the reasons he wears the goggles is because he's been poked in the eye so many times, many different attempts to try and stop Kenny Walker. One out of one from the line for Kenny Walker. 19 points. 
And that's his average, 19-6. Now he has 20. And Kentucky trying to open it up. They're back at 13 at 42-29. Western Kentucky with only one or two starters on the floor for a long time. Asbury leans into a jumper, won't go. Harden couldn't hold the rebound, and Kirk Lee comes out for the hilltop. Martin working for a shot underneath. He's got a blocking foul on Kenny Walker. Good move. One of the few times that Western Kentucky has been able to get the ball down on the blocks. Martin was so anxious, he almost walked before he got the shot. But again, any time you get the ball down low, a good pump fake will get the majority of ball players in the air. Mark showing good patience. The second pump fake worked, and he went up almost charged, but a good pro move. Martin goes to the line. He'll get a pair with his team down by 13. This is his first trip. 71% shooter on the season. <laughs> Updating you on another score. Cleveland State continues to hang in there. They've tied St. Joseph's at half, 26-26. Martin hits the second free throw, and now it's a 12-point Kentucky lead. Here comes the full court pressure again. Loose ball. Davender gets it up court quickly to Jenkins. Blackman and Davender now the guards for Eddie Sutton. Jenkins jump hook. Pretty shot over Clarence Martin. We talk about God giving advantages working for you. Again, that long reach working well for Jenkins. Wingspan coming into play. Kentucky now by 14, and Western can ill afford to let the lead get any bigger. I think they've got to continue to try to look for Clarence Martin and tell us Frank on the inside. There's Frank. Tough jump shot from 12 feet. 44-32. Frank is a little winded. He's huffing and puffing. Important that he not pick up any foolish fouls by reaching. He makes it tough for that uh, opposition on the wing on that press at 6-9. Bennett down the lane. Offensive foul, Winston Bennett. And standing in there was Clarence Martin, who paid the price. I like Winston Bennett. He is one mean, aggressive ball <laughs> player who just goes to work Get out of my way. There's only one thing I'm going to do with this, and that's to take it right to the hoop. No fear. Look at him. <laughs> Talk about no fear. Clarence Martin saw it coming and stood in there anyhow. Well, Clarence Martin is a former high school football player. He, he relishes contact. He was looking forward to it. A little easier with pads, though, isn't it? 44-32. <laughs> Western Kentucky with a chance to cut the lead to 10. Kirk Lee working against Blackman. Nice move. What a pretty play by Kirk Lee, the freshman from Baltimore. Teammates gave him a lot of help. A couple of good picks. Four points for Lee. More full court pressure. It's a 10-point ball game with 15-19 left from Charlotte, North Carolina. Token pressure attempting to disrupt the Kentucky offense, but Kentucky's been very, very patient. You rarely see them throw the ball away. They protect it very well. This is Jenkins to Bennett and now to Blackman. Roger Harden getting a good breather on the Kentucky bench right now. The All-American Kenny Walker. 22 points. I think every adjective and superlative has been used up in describing the play of Walker. What a shot by Billy Gordon. Cuts it back to 10. Gordon and now with 10 points. The guards for Western Kentucky starting to come to life. Davender being worked on by number 11, Kirk Lee. Jenkins to Blackman. Kenny Blackman Walker being guarded by uh, Gordon. Walker does such a nice job of getting position. He rolls with the punches on the inside. And the shot by Cedric Jenkins, who only averages 2.9 points a game. He has six this afternoon. And the lead is back to 12. Loose ball underneath. It is out to the Hilltoppers. Harden will check back in, but first we have a timeout with 14.07 to go in the ballgame. Kentucky 48, Western Kentucky 36. The story is on the scoreboard. 14.07 left to go in the game, and Kentucky leading Western Kentucky 48-36. Now, you would think this uh, would be a natural rivalry, but in truth, they have only played twice ever, today being the second. Well, obviously, a number of these players were 
tiny toddlers when they last played, weren't they? But they do know that current day Kentucky is, of course, still the god in Kentucky, and they're doing their best to try and defuse some of that all. Kennard Johnson will inbound the basketball, gets it to Swagger. And now back to Kirk Lee, who's gone most of the second half of the point guard. Johnson. Kentucky may have gotten away with one that time. I think Winston Bennett got a piece of the arm. He did, but Winston Bennett wouldn't tell it. Oh, no. Harden is back into the ball game at the point for the Wildcats. Blackman. Kennard Johnson, awfully tough job trying to defend against Kay Walker, who moves so frequently on the inside, which makes him so tough to stop. Bennett. Kentucky just got a lot of weapons. It's 50 to 36, Cats by 14. That makes it frustrating when you do a good job of keeping the ball from getting into Walker, and then the supporting cast burns you. Billy Gordon trying to make something happen in the middle. Fires over Blackman, the rebound to Bennett. It's amazing to say that Bennett is, quote unquote, only 6'7", playing the power forward position, but he truly plays like a 6'10 ball player. Blackman on the pass from Walker, missed the shot. Swagger with a rebound. Bennett tried to slap it away from him. Pull up jumper, Kirk Lee, way off the mark. Harden ahead of the pack to Blackman. And Lee got there, got a piece of it, and Blackman is out of bounds. What a play by Lee. I never thought he'd get there. That was a good play. Blackman just didn't see him coming, nor did he expect to, to see that kind of hustle coming out of Kirk Lee as he goes up. Oh. And that's what Eddie Sutton was screaming at. He heard the slap. <laughs> yeah. And as you take a look at Eddie Sutton, he's still screaming at the official. The official was trying to say that was ball, but there's a difference between leather sound and flesh sound. Well, he got within a foot of the ball on that one, I think. 50 to 36. <laughs> Billy Gordon can't get it. Got a foul in the middle. This one will go against Kentucky, and they're pointing at Blackman. Now, well, no wonder Eddie Sutton was upset about that last call. There's a good look at Blackman, who picks up the person. And up front, it has just been no contest. Kentucky is killing them. Of course, that is their strength with Walker and Bennett up front. They combined for 32 points a game normally. Tell us Frank. Pretty looking jump shot out of the corner, 50 to 38. Western Kentucky certainly not out of it. They're only down by 12 and plenty of time to go with 12-25. Another score, Arkansas Little Rock. The Cinderella Slippers Bill Fitz, 47-44 over North Carolina State. That's the second half score. Blackman to Cedric Jenkins. Had the ball tipped away. Quick hands by Clarence Martin. Bill Toppers was staying with the man-to-man -man defense. Wouldn't be surprised to see him switch it up now, try to throw a little confusion in there on defense. Inbounded into the corner, and Blackman will come back out to set it up. The shot clock did not reset, by the way. Right now, it's at 17 seconds. Indeed, they did. The whole top is back into a 2-3 zone defense now. Harden. And Walker in the lane still does. Got it to him. Just great balance. No matter what Western Kentucky does to try and confuse Kentucky, Kentucky wisely is reading the plays. Roger Harden is leading the way, of course. Swagger, tough break in and out. The follow shot by Frank is blocked by Walker. Another follow. Tipped away, and here comes Harden. alley -oop. Blackman can't get the shot down. He thought he was fouled by Lee. They throw it away, and here comes Harden back the other way. And Eddie Sutton wants a timeout. 11-23 left in the ball game, and Eddie Sutton going for his 31st win as his club up by 14. Stay back to Mike Patrick. Thanks very much, Brent. 11 minutes and 23 seconds to go on this one from Charlotte, and Kentucky is leading Western Kentucky by 14 points. The Hilltoppers in the first half, James Brown and the second half, have worked their offense the way they wanted, and I'm sure Clem Haskins is happy with their execution, but if the ball doesn't go in a hole, it doesn't matter. Well, the one thing that wasn't working was getting the ball down on the blocks and converting, and that, again, was because of the great defense by Kentucky. And when you saw when Kentucky shoots over 50%, it's flat, they win, and they're shooting 58% right now. 
Western Kentucky in a zone with 11-16 to go. Bennett and Harden exchanging passes outside. This is Blackman. Harden hasn't done much in the way of scoring today, but he's done the other things that are so important. He's recognized the defensive changes on the part of the Hilltoppers and has gotten his team into the right offensive set as well as distributing the ball to the right person. Keep looking for Kenny Walker in the middle. Don't go to Jenkins at the baseline. Jenkins has eight. Fine performance off the bench for the sophomore from Dawson, Georgia. The lead is 16. Swagger got the bucket and the foul. See who picks up the personal. I think they're going to give it to Jenkins. He will yep. learn. He's only a sophomore. The mistake that he made, again, he's got the size advantage. He's got the wingspan. Take a look. Number 55 in white. He's got his hands up, but now he brings them down and swats across the elbow. That was the mistake. All he needed to do was maintain his position. Swagger, who had 18 on this floor earlier this year against North Carolina Charlotte, and who has averaged 16 points a game his last two, now has only three. The first time today he has scored. Cuts the lead down to 13 at 54 41. Walker up court in a hurry. Now back to Harden. Good decision. You rarely see Kenny Walker make any mistakes, try to force things, press the issue. If the shot isn't there, the play hasn't developed, he kicks it back out. Kentucky with a comfortable lead of 13, but it doesn't look like they're getting out of their offense, and that's something we saw yesterday that Georgia Tech did. Not at all. It's really got to be frustrating for the Hilltoppers to really come up with some good plans but just not be able to execute. Walker finally missed one, and the reason was he was fouled. Well, you knew there had to be a reason. Walker gets banged, he gets pushed, but he really flows with the punch. His stamina obviously is outstanding, and even though he's getting banged on the inside, he's hanging right there. Doesn't have a lot of big, bulging muscles, but he's wiry strong, and he really can take a pounding. Call the foul on Martin. Officially, it's his third as Walker hits the free throw. He is probably going to be, and this is hard to believe, a better pro because the game will be so wide open, they won't be able to send two and three people at him, and he will blossom even more so. A lot much, a lot like uh, Lenny Bias, I believe, with that University of Maryland. The pro game is really well suited to those two styles of play. I have to agree with you. This is Fred Tisdale, the sophomore from Russellville, Kentucky. Quickest player on the ball club checks in for Clem Haskins. His team needs some quickness now. They're down 56-41, approaching the 10-minute mark. And we're inside 10 minutes right now. And that's one of the few times Kennard Johnson has had the ball in the second half. The foul's going to be on Cedric Jenkins. And that's what I meant in terms of the Hilltoppers. Their game plan was to get the ball down on the blocks. But Kentucky... Who comes out of the ball game with eight points. But these Kentucky fans really recognize and appreciate good basketball even when you aren't scoring points. They know the game extremely well. And they've, they've had great programs for years and years and years. Johnson hits the free throw. Eddie Sutton says they know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> I think he's talking about the media when he said that. <laughs> Them too. <laughs> three points. Three for three, rather, for Kennard Johnson from the line. Make it four for four. And it's 56 to 43. Western Kentucky hanging within striking distance. But they've got to get some turnovers off of this pressure defense. And Harden and Davender do a good job against it. To Winston Bennett, to Walker. Nice fake of the pass. Kentucky doesn't make many foolish mistakes. They protect the ball extremely well. You rarely find them throwing the ball away. They're using the clock well and still getting good shots at the end of their possession. Shot clock now down to 11 seconds. And that's what's frustrating to a zone defense now. The Hilltopper legs, their legs are starting to leave them now. Davener to Harden with three seconds on the clock, and he had to force that one. Kentucky trying to keep it alive, and they'll get the ball out of bounds. I mentioned that the Hilltoppers, some of their legs are starting to leave them. Ray Swagger is a good indication as he started to go back and forth in that zone press. That zone defense, he was really looking very wobbly. Harden to inbound. And Davener will bring the ball out and set it up with 9.05 to go. Even with a 13-point lead, that is a lot of time. 
Weiger coming out trying to pressure Davender. But Kentucky just passing the ball around the perimeter right now. And James, I think they have gotten out of their offense now. They're just trying to use the clock. North Carolina State has scored eight straight to go on top of Arkansas Little Rock. It's a five-point spread right now. Davender, shot clock is at 10. Block with a pump fake. Winston Bennett in the middle, had it stripped. So he's cleared out about three people. Three on two breaks. The basket is good by Kirk Lee, and it's down to 11. Now, Kentucky has to be careful here. Because Georgia Tech was nearly burned yesterday when they simply went into a shell and did not get good shots at all. No reaching fouls in this full court press. All you need to do is to try to slow the pace right here, force some turnovers by just playing good position defense. Davender beat the 10-second count. Kentucky just working on the clock, and they're going to call a reach-in foul on Swagger. Have another update for you. Beginning of the second half, Cleveland State and St. Joseph's, and they're tied at 28, just starting the second half, as we said. This is when it really gets exciting at this part of the tournament. The winners today will advance to the Sweet 16. Here in Charlotte earlier, Alabama made it. The last second shot beating Illinois. They'll go on to Atlanta to meet the winner of this ballgame. Boy, Ed Devender really has regained his confidence, refound his game under the coaching of Eddie Sutton. He and James Black and both. Eddie Sutton made no bones about it. He says, I love guards. I don't think they get enough credit. They control the tempo. They find the right people. I want to see these guys do well, and indeed they have. It's easier to love guards when they get the ball to Kenny Walker, too. No doubt about it. <laughs> love any guard that would get it to Kenny Walker. A big man loves a good guard. That's right. As well. Davender, one out of two. Swagger with a rebound. So it's a 12-point game at 57 of 45. They get it low to Tisdale. Turnaround jumper. He's fouled by Locke. That'll be number one on Robert Locke. Locke's playing much better basketball this year. I mentioned that a little while ago. He's moving very well. It looks as if he's got his, his coordination together and his foot speed a little better. Certainly, he's been working on some uh, agility drills in the offseason. Well, that's been a continuing problem for young men uh, who at the age of 17, 18 years old are 6'10 and 220. Coordination has to have some time to catch up with him, and he has done a good job. Tisdale missed the first free throw. A lot of young players on Plum Haskins Hilltopper Club. The only senior is starting guard Billy Gordon. A lot of freshmen, sophomores. Tisdale's a sophomore. The most valuable player of his high school tournament in Kentucky. And that's an honor in that state. Haskins is talking to Billy Gordon. He's been getting a breather. He's setting, setting him up to come back in the ballgame. 57-46, 11 points. Going to travel on Harden. And Western will get the ball back with a chance to cut the lead down to single numbers. I talked about uh, Clem Haskins being a good tactician. Certainly defense has got to key things for him. He recognizes that. Again, you don't have to steal the ball. Just play good, aggressive defense with your body. That will force the turnovers. That's what just happened. Well, Harden didn't think he traveled. But the official was right there and said he did. Seven minutes, 39 seconds left from Charlotte, North Carolina. James Brown and Mike Patrick, glad you could be with us for the second round of the NCAA. And that's going to be goaltending on Skywalker. Great move by Kennard Johnson. A lot of time left on that clock. And what's happening, getting the ball down the blocks was not working well for the first three quarters of the game. It's starting to pay dividends now. 16 for Johnson. And this is Davender who was fouled before he got off the shot. And they'll call it on Kirk Lee. It was really a break that Lee committed the foul there because Davender was trying to beat the pack. Down to a nine-point margin at 57 to 48. And they called it on Martin. That'll give him four, and he'll have to come out of the ballgame. Now, Lee raised his hand. It looked like he had reached in and committed the personal, but they'll get Martin with it. And that hurts. 
to have the young man on the bench with four fouls, seven and a half minutes left. Indeed, because he plays consistently strong basketball, and the one knock against Tellus Frank is that a lot of times he has a tendency to lose his intensity. Davender at the line. This is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Hits the first. Davender with eight points on the day. He will not miss many free throws for you. 79.6%. He has hit four out of five right on his percentage average today. Any time he gets a chance to show his New York shake and bake moves, he will. <laughs> Very patient at the free throw line. A lot of concentration. Gets another one. Kentucky really has done a good job all game long of getting all five players back. Now we see him in a 2-3 zone defense. Right down the middle of the lane, this time no goaltending as Kenny Walker swats it away from Kennard Johnson. Big play there. It's an 11-point lead, and Kentucky has the ball back. Kennard ought to learn from that to pump fake. Anytime you double clutch like that, you make yourself smaller than you normally are, and it's easier to block the shot. Kenny Walker is not only a great athlete, he is a smart player. Plays under control. He reminds me of a martial artist, a keto, if you will. He rolls with the punches, doesn't exert an awful lot of energy trying to meet brute force with brute force. He just rolls with it. Shot clock is down to nine seconds, and Walker is fouled as Kirk Lee just went up for a free ride. You wonder why they commit the foul with nine seconds left on the shot clock and the ball on the perimeter, but they did. And here's an update. North Carolina State leading Arkansas Little Rock by three in the Midwest. In the East, St. Joseph's over Cleveland State. You'd asked me two weeks ago if Cleveland State and Arkansas Little Rock would be in at this point. I have to ask where are they? Of course, Arkansas Little Rock tells you the story. You just can't shake them. No, you can't. Six minutes, 41 seconds left to go. Walker with 26 big points, make it 27. Walker does it on the offensive end and the defensive end, as we mentioned before. But watch how you make yourself smaller. When you double clutch like that, Kennard Johnson made himself smaller, and you can't do that against Kenny Walker. Walker out of Roberta, Georgia. One of the few things he hasn't made all day. Winner Hamilton, the assistant at Kentucky, says he could not believe it when he saw him in high school. Raw talent. This is what happened earlier in Charlotte as Alabama at the buzzer beat Illinois. Western Kentucky desperately needing a basket. Johnson had it stuffed again, and he drew the foul this time. You may ask, how is it that Kentucky can do it without seven-footer, 6'11 guys in there? When you have Kenny Walker at 6'8", and Winston Bennett at 6'7", playing at least two or three inches taller than they are, you don't necessarily need them. And Kenny Walker checking on Cedric Jenkins, who got slapped in the eye. Looks like he may have lost the contact. Right. You have to get Lenny Wirtz a stepladder to get up there to look at it. And a pair of binoculars. <laughs> now, you said that one. Well, it's true. It's true. 6.24 left to go. Number 55 in white. Take a look. Cedric Jenkins as Walker and Bennett go up and do the damage, and the ball hit him square in the eye. Mm, That's enough. the top of the head to add insult to injury. That's enough to knock the contact loose. Now there, you see the official found it. Hey, well, look, who's closest to the floor? Lenny Wirtz. He's 5'4", right? <laughs> well, I hope, you're, I hope you're not on the same plane back uh, home with Lenny Wirtz. He'll get you for that. 60-48, to 48, Kentucky by 12, 6.24 to go. Bob and Jenkins picked up his fourth personal foul there. Bob Stender says that's the guy who has to make the call, the guy closest to the contact. We'll be sure to pass that one along the works. Now, it's about time for Western Kentucky. If they're going to make a move, they're down by 12. They need to do it now. And Kennard Johnson will go to the free throw line. Johnson was 16 points. He's led his club today, and he's hit all four of his free throw attempts. Even though Western Kentucky make that Kentucky has hit some, some dry spells in terms of scoring, the constant for them has been defense, defense, defense. Short on this free throw. Really impressed with Kennard Johnson. He has really played hard today. 12-point margin. Johnson can cut it to 11. You just saw his numbers on the afternoon. Hit the second free throw, and it's an 11-point spread. And here comes the full-court pressure. They get it into Winston Bennett. He's fouled immediately by Tellus Frank. 
And Tellus Frank is grabbed by Clem Haskins, who didn't want him to get any into any further trouble. You can't allow the frustration to work on you right now. And that is going to be number five on Tellus Frank. And Clem Haskins talking to him about it. Frank came off the bench, did a pretty good job, had nine points. But he fouls out of the ball game at the 623 mark. And they'll bring Ray Swagger back into the ball game. And you lose some height with Tellus uh, Frank fouling out. Clarence Martin has four. He's on the bench. Billy Gordon has had three since the first half. So obviously, uh, Clint has to be limited in terms of uh, having some, some options and substitution wise. Bennett at the line. Very difficult to go out and foul Kentucky. They have some excellent free throw shooters. About the only player you have a chance with is James Blackman, who's a 60% shooter. The rest are 75% and over. It's certainly nice that the coaches recognize the contribution that Winston Bennett has made all year long by selecting him the first team because this kid can really play. Bennett makes one out of two. He sure can. Billy Gordon comes up. It's a 12-point lead again. Gordon off to Swagger. And Swagger cuts it to 10. 61-51. 6.13 to go. Let it go. Here's a steal. And Kennard Johnson cuts it to 8. That's the kind of play Western Kentucky has to have. Knocked away. Kentucky that's right in front of the Western bunt uh, Western bench and Clem Haskins is really hot the smaller squad the quicker squad that Western Kentucky has in there is paying dividends right now good athletic playground ability right here good creativity that's what's helping them to get back into the ball game and Clem Haskins really upset standing right next to Roger Harden on this inbounds play one of his players holding on to an arm. Boy, is he hot. They get it ahead to Davender. alley -oop. Walker couldn't control it and did the right thing. Brought it out. That's why I said he's such a smart player. Good basketball decision. The ball really wasn't over the basket enough for him to execute the slam dunk. Bennett back to Harden in the lane. He kicks it back out. And here's the foul. Swagger again got caught up in the air and just landed on a Kentucky player. This time Jenkins who's back in. Another tight game to keep you updated on. North Carolina State continues to lead Arkansas Little Rock by three. Jim Valvano won't have a voice left by the time that one's over. <laughs> and he won't want to see another hyphen in a long time. That's right. Can't play those teams with hyphen. 5.37 to go. In this one here in Charlotte, North Carolina, Kentucky by eight over Western Kentucky. Jenkins with eight points off the bench will go to the line where he is two for two. Big decision for three. That was a big one there. Big decision that Clem Haskins is going to have to make now is when to bring Clarence Martin back into the ball game. And your choice of teams, Cleveland State, is up by two over St. Joseph's. You like those kids, don't you? Team to watch. I like Cleveland State. I like, I like Louisville. I think they're both playing extremely well right now. Jenkins 0 for 1, so Western Kentucky could cut it to 7 with a bucket here. And they do. Billy Gordon, the only senior on the club. No longer playing in Lancaster shadow. Seven point game, 5.17 to go. Bennett back to Hart. Gordon now has 12 points. Johnson the leading scorer for Western with 19. And the Hilltoppers playing pressure defense just as hard as they can go. Five minutes even left in this game. Davender works for a shot, he's short. Rebound to Kennard Johnson. How about this for a finish? Fred Tisdale doing an outstanding job on Kenny Walker the last two or three times down the court. The only problem is it's taking a toll stamina-wise on him now. He's going to need a blow. And Kentucky has gone to a zone. Five-point lead as Billy Gordon knocks it down from outside. 62-57. And Eddie Sutton is up on his feet. He can't like what he sees. The young man from Jackson, Mississippi, known as a streak shooter. What a comeback for the Hilltoppers. Harden comes across the timeline, and Kentucky wants to talk it over with 4.17 to go. They're up by five. 
Western Kentucky has scored eight of the last nine points, J.B. Number 34 in red. Fred Tisdale easily could have been called for a foul, but look at the job that he does in keeping Kenny Walker away from the action, and that's the kind of physical contact Kenny Walker's had to live with all year long, but it took more out of Fred Tisdale on that than it did Kenny Walker because he rolls with the punches. A couple more steps, he'd have had him in the parking lot. <laughs> Four seventeen left in this one, and Western Kentucky with a great comeback has closed this game down to a five-point margin. And no matter what happens, they have to take a lot of credit for what they've done. Well, the, the Hilltoppers have done a good job of keeping the ball away from Walker for the most part. He's only had two shots here in the second half. And that's what got Western Kentucky back in at seven of the last eight. And Kenny Walker has only had a couple of shots in the second half. And this foul will be on Kirk Lee reaching in on the double team. That'll be three on Kirk Lee. Four minutes, 15 seconds left in this one. Kentucky by five. And Kenny Walker will go back to the free throw line. Clint Haskins is definitely one of the calmer coaches I've seen on the sidelines. <laughs> he is really into the game. He's involved every inch of the way. 4.15 left. Walker at the line. Haskins looks on, and Walker hits the first one. Right now, let's check in with Brent Musburger for an update from New York. All right, we're going to send you right back to that Kentucky game, but first we've got a dramatic ending unfolding in Minneapolis. All right, they get ready for overtime. We want to send you back now for the last minute 40. 65-60, Kentucky with the lead. There is a timeout. When you pick up the action, Western Kentucky will have the ball. Here's Mike Patrick. Western Kentucky has cut the lead to five points with one minute and 37 seconds left. Clem Haskins has called a timeout. He will have one left. Eddie Sutton of Kentucky has two remaining in the final 137. And Western Kentucky really has to get credit for all the courage that they've shown coming back uh, against a team that is as great as the Wildcats of Kentucky. Almost out of necessity when Clem Haskins had to fight, or rather substitute, for the uh, Tellus Frank who fouled out. Right. He got a quicker squad in there, a smaller squad, really forced the tempo. Their press worked extremely well. And you really have to like the fact that the Hilltoppers did not lose confidence. They continued with their game plan, even though it had not been working for three quarters of the game. Eddie Sutton has seen his team uh, lose a big, big lead. It's down to five now. And... Western Kentucky trying to eat into that lead with 137 left. What a great game for Kennard Johnson. And they'll try to get the ball inside to him. He has 20 points. A bucket here, we would have a three-point game. This is usually where tradition comes into play. A team that's accustomed to winning the tight games and the big games like Kentucky usually plays with poise down the stretch. Tisdale, short, got his own rebound. Stripped. Kentucky with the ball. Walker, Blackman, basket counts, offensive foul. Well, Blackman won't mind that. He won't mind giving up the foul for the two points, and Kirk Lee was trying to draw the charge. I mentioned that the big teams normally play with poise and come up with the big play in a tight situations. Take a look at the quick hands on defense here. Nice play. Kentucky really came through, kept their head about themselves, and then they continue to move the ball up and down the court. An unselfish pass by Kenny Walker over to Blackman, and a good call by the official because the sure ball was. had been released after, before the contact. Now, this is the best time for Western Kentucky to score with the clock stopped, 115 left to go, and Lee will go to the free throw line. He is only a 63% free throw shooter. He's there on the one and one. His team now down by seven. Not even close. And Walker with a basketball. Big possession there, and now Kentucky will work on the clock. Amazing how Walker still has spring left in his legs after being banged around all game long and playing hard. He's just unbelievable. Bennett and Harden exchanging the ball. Kentucky just very well schooled. And here's a foul away from the ball as Walker was getting banged around a little bit again. He's got to be used to that by now, though, doesn't he? Arkansas Little Rock in overtime, 61-56 over North Carolina State. They just don't quit. What an amazing story for him. 
It is not a final, however. We'll keep you up to date on it. If you don't put a team like that away early, you allow their confidence to build. That's right. Now, Western Kentucky was confident enough to close within five, and they had the basketball. Right now, they're down by seven. And Kenny Walker can really do him some damage. He has 28 points. No good on this free throw. And the Hilltoppers are still alive. This is Swagger. Pull-up jumper. Offensive rebound, and it will go against Western Kentucky with 44 seconds left. Kennard Johnson really upset. He thought he had to rebound inside. But apparently he pushed off to get position. And look at Clem Haskin. You really have to respect the job that Clem Haskin has done staying with it. But take a look at Kennard Johnson, number 33 on the inside. Oh, yeah. Actually, he got pushed from behind by Winston Bennett. That calls a contact. Talking about a three-car pileup. Timeout with 44 seconds left, and it's Kentucky by seven. Kentucky, the top-ranked team in the Southeast region, trying to survive the upset bit of Western Kentucky. Both clubs with one timeout left and only 44 seconds to use them. That's Big Red, the mascot of Western Kentucky. Arkansas Little Rock in overtime, leading North Carolina State 61-60. to And North Carolina State knows something about magic that comes in a bottle when they had their championship run in this tournament. Walker's free throw is good. He'll get another. Kenny Walker, truly an All-American, a brilliant player, 7 out of 10 from the free throw line, has 29 points today. And didn't force anything. No, he didn't. And if he got extra points for smart decisions, he'd be up to 50. It's 69-60. Western Kentucky in a lot of trouble now. Billy Gordon trying to get something done. Missed the shot. Walker rebound. Everybody slapping at him, and somebody finally got him with 36 seconds left. Well, certainly the Hilltoppers can feel the game slowly but surely starting to slip away now as you take a look at their bench. Down by nine, but they certainly gave everything they had, Mike Patrick, even when in the first half Kentucky had every answer for their defensive play or their offensive play, they continued to plug away and really gave it one whale of a run. JB, a real uh, a real matter of pride for Western Kentucky coming into this ball game for their second meeting ever with uh, Big Blue. And they'd like to think it won't be another 16 years before they have a chance to play them again. Clem Haskins says they write a letter every year asking for a home and home meeting and hopefully he thinks they'll get it worked out sometime well it absolutely will not be 16 years before this team is back into the ncaa tournament clem haskins has had a decent recruiting year he's got three solid kids coming in here they'll be back again walker hits the free throw 31 points for skywalker and they'll take Kennard johnson out of the ball game and he'll get a deserved big hand both coaches are clearing their benches right now. We'll pick up some of the names that are in there. Keith Licklider, number 10 for Western Kentucky. Johnson goes out with 20 points. And coming out is Ed Davender for Kentucky. He gets a big hand from the Wildcat fans. Walker at the line. Cleveland State leading St. Joseph's 58 to 52. Walker hits again. He's been amazing. 32 of his team's 71 points. This is Licklider. Bombs away from outside and drilled it. The freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, 71 to 62. 24 seconds left. Harden gets it over to Leroy Bird. Bird, an excellent ball handler, comes out back to Harden. And Bird will fire from the corner. Just nicked it on the way by. Ten seconds to go. This is Brian Asbury. Baseline foul shot. That's Chucky Taylor. 71-64. Kentucky doesn't even have to inbound. Kentucky wins its 31st game, and they survive. 71 to 64 and JB we said it before that's what you do in this tournament you don't necessarily win you survive and Kentucky has done it nicely all year long tradition carrying through we want to thank everybody here in Charlotte for a great stay for the Southeast Regional right now let's go back to New York and Brent Musburger